You're listening to the Real Estate Runway podcast, powered by Quattro Capital, where we are all about alternative business and investment strategies to help you amplify life and maximize wealth. Here's your host, the recovering engineer turned multifamily investor, Chad Sutton. All right, all right, all right, Real Estate Runway family. Today, today we're going to get into a high energy podcast. We're going to talk with Dr. Erin Hudson, managing partner of Quattro Capital on our team about how she keeps her energy up. We're going to get into some of my practices as well. But look, if you're trying to excel at anything, life, business, investing, parenting, you got to be in a peak energy state. And I'm here to tell you, if you're not nourishing your body, you don't have a morning success routine and you're not working that body and getting into a positive mindset, four things, you're going to struggle, okay? We're going to show you how to do that. Before we do, if you get any value out of this show whatsoever, please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and leave us that five-star review and thoughtful comment right here on Apple Podcasts. That's how we reach more people like you, and we so appreciate you for doing it. If you want to be on the show, please reach us at thequattroway.com slash podcast to apply. And if you'd like to email us, request a question, a topic, or just say hello, or get in touch with our team for any reason, podcast at thequattroway.com is the way to do that. We're on all the socials, folks. We even have a TikTok now. We are so with the times at Real Estate Runway Podcast on TikTok, and we are at Team Quattro Capital, one word, no special characters everywhere else, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, you name it. As I mentioned, we're also on YouTube now, so if you'd rather watch this on video and see my smiling face as well as the beautiful guests I bring on this show, hit YouTube and type in Real Estate Runway. We will be right there for your viewing pleasure. With that being said, let's get right into our episode. See you there. All right, Real Estate Runway family, welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Runway podcast, Quattro Roundtable Edition. Dun, 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 dun. We have Dr. Aaron Hudson back for another episode with us. Aaron, say hello. Love you. Have your energy today. Oh, hey, it's so great to be here as always. I hope we give the listeners some incredible value and some nuggets that they can not only just hear, but they can actually take action and apply. I love it. I love it. And Aaron, I'm so fired up this morning just because, you know me, I love technology, right? I'm just such a tech nerd all the time. <laughs> We were just geeking out over it. We have a new a, a partner in the marketing side of things who is helping us with investor relations and putting things out there. And this, the technology behind it is so cool. Plus, we're working on refinancing a deal. And I just used, for the first time, a self-service lender brokerage platform to send out one of our magnificent deals oh. to some refinance lenders. So cool. So excited. I'm just, that gets me excited, Aaron. My energy is up because of that, right? <laughs> Love that you say that, but hey, our time is precious. And if we can find more efficient ways to do things, that's enough to get your blood flowing and get excited about what you're doing. So I love it. Yes. And you know, that, that kind of leads us right into what we're going to talk about today. It's energy. It, how do you increase your energy? We're all busy people. We're trying to do incredible things in life with kids and careers and investments and doing good in the world. And it just takes a lot of energy to run those batteries to, to power a person to do all that, right? Aaron, let's get right into that. Tell just I want to hear your energy routine. What did you do this morning to get your energy up? Because I know it's something phenomenal because you're that kind of person. <laughs> well, you are spot on my morning routine. I know it might get old. Everybody hears what is it? The I guess there's a few different things that you can follow in the morning and it's everybody about their reading and their savers and their this and their that. But listen, it doesn't matter what you do, just apply it to what works best for you and make sure that it makes you stretch a little bit and gets you a little bit out of your comfort zone. So I'll just share mine. And some of the listeners might be going, holy smokes, that's crazy. Why in the world would she do that? But let me tell you, everything I'm about to share with you has everything to do with the trajectory and the rest of your day. So for me, I always want to make sure I'm starting it off right. And first things first, I wake up, I have water by my bed. I make sure that I get my water in first things first. And maybe it's six ounces, eight ounces. I'm currently working on a gallon a day and I'm 21 days in with getting in a gallon and it just feels good. So water first, wake up and take that nice, big, deep breath. And really, you know what that does? And it says to your body, I'm awake, I'm ready to go, let's go. So that's what that breath does. Then I walk straight into my office. Well, hold on, let me rewind a little bit. 
I actually walk straight into my closet and get my laid out workout clothes because it is not a question of whether I'm going to work out. I've got to put on the attire so that I know I'm walking it out. So I hope like this may sound r ridiculous that I'm sharing this, but I hope that you like try some of this on for size because there's it's not just like haphazard. Oh, that's weird. It's like there's intentionality in all of it. So I walk straight to my closet, put on my workout gear. I walk straight into my office and I immediately right away write down my three things that I'm thankful for. And it could be anything. I'll just give you an example here. It can be as subtle as I'm thankful for my warm home today. Or it could be today, mine was I'm thankful for my grit and I'm grateful that I attract the masses. Those are my three. So why not marinate on some gratitude? So I start with that and then I head right to the gym. I don't even give myself a moment to think about it. I'm out for a run or I'm out at the gym getting in my workout at minimum at least 45 minutes to, to an hour. So I'll pause with that, but those are my like non-negotiables. And the way that that beauty spills over, so let me just say one more thing. Look, I'm a mama of five. I've got four that are in my house right now. And when I'm in here writing my gratefuls and I'm saying them out loud, right? There's something beautiful that happens when you audibly are talking about and sharing those to yourself, right? My kids are upstairs, but they hear and they know what mama's up to. They know my routine. It's persistent every single day. And sometimes I get a little bit loud when I'm talking about myself and affirmations of you're awesome, you've got grit, or I am awesome. So guess what? It's not weird to them when I get in the car to carpool them and take them to school when I lean over and say, hey, crew, tell me your top three things that you're grateful for today. It's not weird. My kids know that it's an expectation that mom is probably going to throw out at them. So these are things that are important to me, but I hope they're going to be important to my children. They implement some of these same things in the morning to get their fire up running and flying with flames. I never mean to, well, I guess I do mean, but I didn't mean for this to go into the parenting side of things, but let's do that because if you don't influence your kids, someone else will. Oh. You have about eight years to influence your children before they're gone, I mean, not before they're gone, before the world will influence them. And then about 18 before they're gone. And so it, it's, yeah, these little things that you instill in their impressionable years, it's incredible because that's what's going to, that's what's going to stick with them. And you know what? Think about it for better or for worse. The things your parents instilled upon you, you still deal with. Like I, I remember I caught myself telling my daughter, she was doing this with her nose one day, pushing it up for those who are not on YouTube, but she was taking her finger, pushing her nose up. She's like a pig. And I looked over and instinctively I said, don't do that. It's going to get stuck that way because my mother used to tell me that, right? And I know it's not true. It's not going to happen. <laughs> but yeah. for better or for worse, the things you impress on your children are going to stick with them. So true. I love that. I'll even further say, share a little bit more. Look, it's an open book in our home with when it comes to finances and talking about numbers and earning power and so on and so forth. Why? Because my parents didn't talk about that growing up at all, but I wanted it to be something that's of utmost importance. And you've got to be able to plan and see those numbers. So it's topic of conversation at time in our house, because I want to raise up our kids to be entrepreneurial, to know that they can have whatever they want. And the sky's the limit, as cliche as it sounds, they can have whatever they want. It just depends on if they're willing to take action and how bad they want it. So yesterday's conversation in the car with my son at six in the morning driving him to soccer practice was, what can I help you do, son, to help you earn some money? He goes, well, mom, there's these drinks that these kids love at school. And I already looked at them. The price on them is $8.99 for a dozen of them. And I can sell them for five bucks at school. And I go, well, how do you know this? And he's like, because it happened last week. A boy sold for $5. And so, of course, it created the discussion of mom can you borrow me the money to buy those drinks? And then I'll make sure that you get the first of the money that I receive from selling them back in your pocket. My child's 13. I want to just shower that conversation because that's stuff that starts now and turns into something massively bigger as he grows and walks out through, walks through life, right? So anyways, yes, kids and entrepreneurial and money and journey. Yes, please. And look, this is all energy here. Like you're going to get energy from building your kids up like that. I love going down that road and let's U-turn it and come back to the energy conversation for a second. 
to, to share a similar routine to Aaron, I have what I, and by the way, these all have different names, depending what book or coach you have, it's all the same stuff, right? Have yourself a routine. I actually have a nighttime success routine. I call it NTSR and an early morning success routine and EMSR, right? My wife jokingly calls it MSR and MSR, but she's funny. So anyway, makes fun of me on things. But the nighttime success routine, I'm doing just what Aaron talked about. I'm, if I want water next to my bed, what do I have to do? I have to fill up my water jug and have and put place it next to my bed. I get my teeth brushed. I put my, my mouth guard in. Now, yes, I have one of those because I snore. So that's a funny thing. But, you know, I lay out my workout clothes on the Peloton so I can either grab them and go for a run or grab them and get on the bike. Like there's no excuse. Otherwise, it just becomes an expensive clothes hanger. All that kind of stuff, right? Then the morning hits. And when my alarm goes off, and folks, it doesn't matter if you get up at 4 a.m. or 6 a.m. or 9 a.m., start your morning with this stuff. You, you get to choose, how, you know, what time you start your day and what time you end your day, but start your day with this stuff. For me, I get up and I have kids in the house, so I got to get up, get them ready for school and get them out. But when I get back home and it's just me, that's when my early morning success routine starts. That's when I pull out the Bible and I do a devotional and I write down my three gratefuls, just like Aaron talks about. You'd be surprised what that puts in your mind when you let God in your brain first, and then you think about the mindset of gratitude first out of the gate. You get so creative after that. Then you go hit a workout. Then you slam your first 60 ounces of water. Then you go get a shower because, you know, workouts make you stink, right? And then you go back into the office and that's when I actually start doing my day. But just think about how accomplished you feel. And I forget who it was there. And there was a major general who gave a speech at a large college graduation one time. And he said, you want to know my success secret in life? Start your day by making your bed. And it was mm -hmm. so simple, but it's the same, it's the same concept. It's yeah. start your day, make your bed, then tackle the next challenge. Maybe it's a workout. Maybe it's slamming your water. Maybe it's a Bible study. Like you, you just progressively tackle things. Come on guys, by 9 a.m. If you do this, you're more successful in the day than most people are by five o'clock. It's incredible. I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Aaron, but that is, that, that's just being intentional about how you up-level your energy first off out of the gate before you start doing something that might bring your energy down. No, I think everything that you touched on is extremely powerful. And the mornings, come on, think about it. It is true. If you try this on for size and you reevaluate the trajectory and how your day went, from the beginning till the end, you will see a difference in it. And it will be something that you'll want more of, honestly. Because when you start to do it, it feels good. When you follow through, I don't care who you are, your self-esteem increases as you stay the course, right? And so who doesn't want to feel better about themselves? There's already a lot of naysayers out there. And I always say to my children, listen, you hear me in my office cheering myself on because nobody else is going to cheer my ass on, right? I'm responsible for me. And that's why we want to teach our kids and others to rise up, be responsible for your actions. There's no one else to blame except for yourself. So I, I love what you shared though, Chad, super applicable. Yeah, folks. And look, no one is more deserving of your love than you. Okay. Cool. There's a lot of people deserving of it, but no one on this planet, you can look far and wide and you will not find a more deserving person than you for your own self-love. So remember that. But Aaron, let's, let's take this into a little more of a tangible aspect of energy. We talked about some psychological and planning things, but you live a pretty healthy lifestyle. I live a pretty healthy lifestyle. Let's go into nutrition and fitness for a second. Maybe nutrition first. What do you nourish your body with? I'm a big proponent of you put crap in, you're going to get, well, crap out. I guess that makes sense. For you. Sorry, bad joke. What? But <laughs> let's go there it. for a minute. No, that's fantastic. Listen, I think that I'm all about balance, right? I'm not one of those moms and I'm certainly not myself where I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't have that. That's carbs. And that's gonna, oh my gosh, I'm gonna gain five pounds. I am not like that. I don't think for me, personal opinion, that is extremely healthy. Why? Because we have to remember for myself, our kids are watching everything. Do we want them to be fanatics about that stuff? No, we teach about balance. So in my home, Yes, you're going to find snacks and treats, but at the same token, my kids know my cooking, <laughs> maybe I need to up it a little bit, but it's a little bit bland because I try and cook healthier. I like to have things that are maybe almond flour, for example, that I like to cook with versus regular flour. And so I teach my kids along the way how we can have healthier choices and how it makes us feel better. And sometimes, like, for example, we just got back from this, we were in Mexico. 
And if you've done an all-inclusive, it's like you can have everything, right? And how do you feel when you go back to your room and you've had everything? You're like a big bloat, right? So I share with my kids, listen, y'all can have, this is a free-for-all. You, you can have a butler bring you ice cream and a full meal at 12 o'clock. You can have 10 soda pops because I don't keep soda in my house. And the choice is yours. But remember, if you feel crappy, I don't want to hear about it. So I think it's very important to give kids agency and freedom. And but at the end of the day, I prefer to make healthier choices. I just feel better. And if I'm going to work that hard in the gym, I best be pretty on my diet and make sure that the food that I'm intaking is somewhat healthy, right? And splurges, healthy splurges are, as well. Nectar understands that raising capital is labor and time intensive, and we exist to solve that problem for you. Nectar provides fast, flexible, cash flow-based financing for experienced rental owners and operators. Whether you need cash for acquiring properties, portfolios, or you simply need it for ROI generating renovations or expansion of staff, Nectar has your back. Grab your 12-month PNL with debt service and click the link in the show notes below to apply today. You know, it's super important. And one of our biggest mentors, Tony Robbins, and he's a great guy from the mindset perspective and fitness. He's a freak of nature there. But he has a saying that says, if you want to perform in a peak state, your body's a machine. You got to nourish it with peak nourishment. And like, just, just unpack what Aaron was saying there for a minute. She glossed over this because it's a second nature to her. And my wife does this too. I'm so glad I married her. I would be a huge individual. But she, she cooks with almond flour and fresh ingredients. We get our eggs from farm fresh locations. Like we avoid processed foods. Just focusing on you are what you eat. Okay. You are your food's food. If you go, by, if you go eat a hamburger, there's a big difference than if that hamburger comes from McDonald's with the lowest of the low grade meat that was probably pumped full of sucrose and glucose and corn and all that stuff and hormones versus you go get a grass fed piece of beef that the ingredients, whatever that cow was eating are, are all natural and probably no preservatives and things of that sort. So the ingredients that you put in your body are super, super important. And it's, people think it's hard to eat healthy, putting good food in your body. I do this test if you don't believe me. Putting good food in your body will make you feel amazing and to the point of just get some raw vegetables, put olive oil on them, sprinkle some salt, pepper, and garlic powder, put it in the oven and roast them. You'd be surprised how good they are. Put a piece of chicken in there. Do the same thing. Not everything's got to be deep fried. Not everything's got to come out of a right. box. Chad, I'm going to add something in on there. Listen, I think that for me, I like to keep our fruit washed up and like available. The grapes are ready. The strawberries are cut. The watermelons prepped. The pineapples in its thing, right? So my kids can have ease when they go to pick what it is that they want. I heard the darndest thing the other day when I was picking out a watermelon at the grocery store. I leaned over to this gentleman that was there in the fruit and produce department stocking, and I said, "Hey, could you help me? Would you mind helping me pick out a watermelon? I'm looking for a good one, and I know there's some technique, and you got to knock on it, and so on and so forth." And he leans over to me, and I was like, "Have you tried any of them? Are they good right now?" He goes, oh man, I cannot touch watermelon. I said, well, why is that, sir? He goes, because I'm diabetic and it's just too much sugar. And he was probably 350 pounds. So it goes back to this. I thought it sounded like an oxymoron, but here's the thing. If you can prep and put that fruit in there, some people will say, oh my gosh, it's just too much sugar. Well, it's natural and it's far better than any processed item you're gonna grab out of the closet, right? Or out of your pantry. And so whether it's fruit, whether it's vegetable, don't get caught up, especially if you're new at this and you're just trying to bring and have healthy food to eat. Don't get caught up on the small stuff. Some people say, oh, carrots aren't good because they've got too much sugar. Throw all of that out of the window. Just start with having fruits and vegetables and some protein and some healthy carbs and don't get crazy about it, right? You don't want to be a fanatic. Just make good choices. And those are some easy ways to, to do that. Don't be the watermelon guy. Yes. And I promise you, if it comes out of the ground or from an animal versus comes out of a box, it is better for you. And there is medical proof for this. If you don't believe me, Dr. Mark Hyman, H-Y-M-A-N, is a fantastic person to, we've seen him speak live. Aaron and I both have. I've bought all of his books. If you don't know how to cook healthy, you don't know what to cook. He has a book called What the Heck Do I Cook? And it's phenomenal. Who would have thought that I, would, the lover of fried chicken, would be eating cauliflower steaks and asking for more? <laughs> It's fantastic what you can do with natural food if you put your mind to it. So that's the food side of things. Any last thoughts on that before we go to fitness, Aaron? What do you think? Wow, I think that's great. 
Yeah, I think we slammed food a little bit, but I mean, yeah. just put good stuff in your body. You'd be surprised. Oh, and I do have one more thing there. I love sweets. I really do. I have a sweet tooth. I've learned not to eat processed sweets. You will not find me eating a Snickers bar or a Twix, but I will indulge in a tiramisu at my finest Italian restaurant or a piece of cheesecake that Nana made or something like that, right? I love it. But here's how you do it, folks. There is a beautiful thing called a scale. And there's one on Amazon you can buy for $19. R-E-N-P-H-O, Renfo is what it is. And it links to your phone. It's super easy. Every single morning before I do anything else, part of my morning success routine is I weigh myself. And, and I've gotten to where I know if I have three glasses of wine the night before and a piece of cheesecake, I'm probably going to hold two pounds the next day. If I, but if I eat vegetables all day and I have a piece of chicken for lunch and I drink water all day, maybe close to a gallon, like Aaron mentioned, I'm probably going to drop that two pounds. And so how do you do things in balance? You can't control what you don't measure. Measure it. Keep it in your phone. And you're going to start, if you watch, you're going to start to realize, well, okay, if I decided I wanted to eat a honey bun today, don't do that. But if you do that, you're probably going to retain some water and some, and some weight the next day. You can counteract that by saying, okay, well, the next day is a healthy day. And so you start to figure out how to find your mean average of how to enjoy life a little bit. Get yourself that piece of cheesecake. Just don't do it every freaking day. You know what I'm saying? It's all about trends. So anyway, I digress. But going back to fitness, Aaron... What sort of fitness routines does someone of your health and stature do, you know, to, to increase your energy and, and really start that day right, but really keep the energy level high and sure. your body in shape? I love that. So my workouts usually are about 45 minutes in the morning when I'm working out. And I will say, if I start to feel a lull in the middle of the day, guess what I do? I get up and I go walk or I'll go run some type of exercise so that I can, or if I'm having a bad attitude, and I got to have an attitude adjustment. I go out and I'll go for a jog. As a matter of fact, Chad called me two days ago and I was out for a run and I was still having a conversation with him. But with that being said, I am a huge proponent of HIT. I love, love HIT. You can mix in a great, just prior to that, you can do some weights. And then what I've been doing is something called Beach Body. It's you don't have to think about it. You just the night before, you know which one you're going to do. And the intensity is intense for me. And I like it. I like to make sure that my blood is flowing. I'm not a just a weights kind of girl. I like to mix it in with some cardio. I like to go hardcore. I'll do a mile. I'll do mile repeats and go super, super fast with a little break in between. So I'll mix it up because here's why. I would say majority of the people get used to like, oh, I'm going to go for a walk and go walk the dog, or I'm going to go for a run and I'm going to run the dog every single day, or they'll go in and do the same muscle routine or something like that with their weights. The body thrives off variety. And when we can give it variety, then we're working different muscles and the fibers are being stressed in different fashion. And so every time we go in there and we're lifting weights, we want to create those little micro tears that make a little bit of internal bleeding because that's the rebuild, right? And that's the same as when you're stretching and working the muscles when you're doing any type of even multifamily and doing underwriting and learning something new, you're getting stretched a little bit, which is going to take you to new levels and have your knowledge increased and you feel in more empowered. It's the same as working out. So you can see how there's this crossover. Um, anyways, I don't want to get too deep in that, but it's really about stressing the body and giving it all different variety for sure. I couldn't agree more with that. And folks, if you don't know what HIT is, it's high intensity training. It's an acronym, H-I-T, high intensity training. And I think I would second that. And I used to be one to just go do the same routines in the weight room. Monday was chest and back. Tuesday was buys and tries, all sorts of stuff. Like I had the routine down, but I was doing the same stuff all the time. And you plateau on your results. The muscle confusion, the way I was taught was muscle confusion, muscle variety is the same thing, right? Yeah. Doing something different to your body all the time. And look, it's pretty cheap to subscribe to these high-intensity training guys. There's people on YouTube that do it. Just Google or YouTube something for high-intensity training. There's Beachbody. I use the Peloton. The Peloton has the bike, but you can also do different coached classes that way. I love showing up and getting my butt kicked. Like I, I think for a living, I think about all the things we have to do in our company. I'm usually thinking while I'm working out. The last thing I want to do is think while I'm working out. I want to show up, have a routine. It's going to be different every single time. And usually pretty spicy if I know the Peloton coaches, right? I'm and Aaron doing beach body, no different. That's pretty spicy workout. Right. But you will get the intensity out of it. You'll get something different. 
and you're going to break a sweat. And folks, I don't have time to work out. What do you say to someone who says, I don't have time to work out here? Oh, don't get me started. It's so- Well, I want you to get started. <laughs> about this. I love this. There is something called net time. No extra time needed. And for any of you multitasking mamas or men out there, this is spot on. You're probably going to listen to some webinar or you're going to have to watch some video or something, or you're going to have to make a phone call and talk to, I don't know, AT&T Mobile. Those usually take about an hour. Imagine if you just got on the Stairmaster or the bicycle or you were lifting weights while you were taking that phone call. You are conquering two things at the same time, and that's called ultra productive. There's a lot of naysayers out there that are like, multitasking, that's not good. But let me tell you, if you can work that net time, no extra time needed, get two things done and kill two birds with one stone, so you absolutely can get it done. One more thing I will say, it goes back to priorities and what you value most. For someone that says they don't have time, that's an excuse and excuses are well-planned lies. And is it a priority? Do you care about your health? Do you want to be a good example to your kids? Do you want to live a long time? Do you want to work at your highest capacity possible? Then you cannot afford not to work out. I hope you hear what I'm saying to you. I'm, be, I'm your biggest advocate because when you work out, not only that, your, all the hormones get released in your body. It's like a, a dose of happy. The hormones get released and naturally you can't help it, but you become super, super happy. And that's why I say, Get out and move. Why? Because you feel really good about yourself. And the things you can accomplish when you've taken your body to that limit and you've stretched it and you're on top of your game, man, your confidence levels can't help but to go through the roof. That, that is amazing. That's exactly where I was hoping you would go. And folks, there's a connection that I made recently even, and it was actually after a Tony Robbins and Mark Hyman talk that I listened to. But a lot of, if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably a high performer or you're trying to be, you're taking action, trying to be, whether you're doing that for your investment life or you're trying to build a business or whatever it is, we talk about all that stuff here. But if you're here, you're a high performer in some regard and think about it as an athlete. If I want to be the best I can be at pole vaulting or at the game of football, being a golfer or what, insert some kind of a athlete that there is a global number one. If you want to be global number one, if you can you really do that if you're not nourishing your body properly and working that body properly? The answer is no. You've never seen an Olympic athlete who ate nothing but Big Macs and never hit the gym. It just doesn't happen, right? Think about that in what, whatever it is you're trying to do. Because it, for most of us, our excelling in the world is not due to our physical body. It's due to what's between our ears. It's how you use your brain. And if you're not working your body and nourishing it properly to where that piece of beautiful machinery is firing on all cylinders and all electrodes and all that at all times, you're diminishing your performance. There's a reason when you see the most successful people in the world, they're usually pretty fit. They usually don't spend time at McDonald's. And so let's just think about that. It's not an accident. Nourish your body. It will take care of you and help you get to a peak performance state. I love it, Chad. So good. I hope y'all are catching what we're throwing down here. We are given the nuggets to increase your life in every area. Bring me energy, feel good. And guess what? When you do all of that, you become incredibly magnetic to all of those that you hang out with and that you're around. They want to know what in the heck did you have for breakfast? It had to be more than the Wheaties, right? And we all want to, life is all about people. It doesn't, it, life is about sales. It doesn't matter what you do in life. It is all sales, whether it's selling your kid on eating their broccoli for dinner, whether it's any mate that you're working with at work, there's things you have to sell people on. It, everybody's selling, right? And so with that being said, don't you want to be the best version of yourself that attracts the masses that when you walk into a room, people's eyes light up because they know that you're here and you're about to bring the goodness to the room? Heck yeah. And we're giving you tips and tricks on how to have just that, my friend. Want to generate higher return and drive alpha for your commercial real estate firm? Now you can with Lobby CRE by 30 Capital. Lobby CRE is an asset management platform designed to manage and optimize cash flow for faster returns and more visibility into performance. Shift your strategy with the market, not because of it. 
Identify opportunities and mitigate risk now rather than later. And save more than eight hours per week through automation. Click the link in the show notes to learn more and book a demo. I don't know what it is about that woman, but she makes me want to go jump on a treadmill right now. If you don't feel that way, listen to the episode again. I'm telling you, this stuff works. Okay, look at us as examples. If you get yourself into a peak energy state, you will go far in life. Trust me when I say it. Ask me how I know. Okay, thank you for being with us today. This has been another episode of the Real Estate Runway Podcast. If you got any value out of the show, I'd love it if you'd leave us a five-star review or thoughtful and thoughtful comment. That's how we reach more people like you. And if you, if you would also subscribe to us on YouTube, if you're watching there, that'll help that channel grow and do the same thing. If you want to be on the show one more time, visit us at thequattroway.com slash podcast to apply. And if you want to send us an email for any reason, but, you know, maybe give us a topic or say hello, podcast at thequattroway.com. We also are on TikTok at Real Estate Runway Podcast. And we're also on all the socials at Team Quattro Capital, one word, no special characters, or just visit us at thequattroway.com. I appreciate your grace. This has been another episode of the Real Estate Runway Podcast, folks. Until next time, over and out. We hope this episode was insightful and brought value to your day. If so, please be awesome and leave us a five-star review. Find out how Team Quattro can help you at thequattroway.com. Until next time, this is the Real Estate Runway Podcast.